A lot of y'all need to be asking me, Engraven, what's the address where we can send our EDC apology letters? Because we owe that man the biggest apology because we've continued to say he's sleeping on the job. He's not doing anything for the Baltimore Ravens. He's not trying to make the team better. Where can we send our letters to? You know what? I'm going to get the address for Owen Mills so y'all can do just that. But before we do, let's get into the latest signing from the Baltimore Ravens, that being Kadar Holman. And we're going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. Before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on and run them likes all the way up. Let's go crazy with it. I appreciate y'all. Y'all been coming through like crazy supporting the channel. So thank you. I, I love you. I thank you for doing what y'all be doing because it goes a long way. Whether you think so or not, you, your like does make a big difference. Your comments make a big difference. Your support, it really does make a huge, huge, huge difference. And we on the way to 75K. Let's get that ASAP, baby. Shout out to Rocky. Now, the Baltimore Ravens, they have signed uh, Kadar Holman, a cornerback who used to play for the Houston Texans. Let's read what Jeff Zrebeck had to say about Kadar Holman. He said, uh, the Ravens are signing cornerback Kadar Holman, who has most recently been on the Houston Texans. And you see, these recent signings from the Baltimore Ravens, Josh Jones, Kadar Holman, both former Houston Texans. I guess the Texans are like, you know what, if we couldn't beat them, we're going to join them. Because we tried twice last year, the very beginning of the season, the very end of the season. We couldn't do it either time. You know what? We're going to the Baltimore Ravens. We like how they do stuff. But anyway, uh, Jeff Zerbeck said this. He said, Holman, a former six-round pick of the Packers, played in 17 games for the Texans last year, and he started one. He also played in 18 games, and he had one start for the Packers early in his career. He is 29 years old. So I know a lot of Ravens fans are going to look at that and be like, oh, man, he only started – Two games, man? What's that about? The, the, this will answer your question. My guy Jake Vogel asked Jeff Zrebeck, he said, is he a big special teams guy? And Jeff Zrebeck said he's an experienced special teams player. And special teams is very important. Uh, I know the, so much of the focus goes to offense and defense, and those are obviously the sexy positions and the, the, the sexy uh, size of the football. But special teams is extremely important as well and i mean hello john hubball he came over as a special teams coach so that holds a big value to him as it should um but with special teams like think about it i'm sure there's been times when you've been watching the baltimore ravens play and with the baltimore ravens sometimes the offense they they they're not going to score on every single drive well unless they play the miami dolphins but they're not going to score on every single drive so there will be times when their offense has to punt. And you'll see they come out there on fourth down to be Jordan Stout getting ready to boot that ball somewhere. So there's been games where we've seen Jordan Stout uh, and then, of course, in years past, Sam Cook, where they punt, punted the ball. It's a nice punt. The returner, he's looking, looking, catches the ball, and he said, you know what? Let me try to make something happen. So he tried to make somebody miss, and then he'll run it upfield. And sometimes he might get a big chunk of yards on a punt return and we're like man what are they doing come on special teams what's going on but then on the flip side of that there are times when sam cook or jordan stout they will come out fourth down or even dave's astadil y'all remember dave's astadil anyway um they'll come out on fourth down and they'll punt the ball and the punt return will be like all right oh i'm about to shake somebody about to make somebody miss he'll catch the ball and then He'll get whacked or get tackled. And then we'll be like, yeah, let's go. Come on, baby. Got him inside the 10-yard line. Oh, man, let's get it. And we'll be hyped off of that. But it just goes to show you just how important special teams is, too. And that's exactly what this signing is. When you think about the Baltimore Ravens and you think about their team, you think about the way that their team is currently constructed right now, the Baltimore Ravens, when you think about it, the Baltimore Ravens are a lot more set than you realize. And I'm explaining exactly what I mean. There are, of course, some holes on the team. They're not set everywhere, but they're a lot more set than you realize. Obviously, they got their starting quarterback. That's Lamar Jackson. Their starting running back, obviously going to be Derrick Henry and hopefully Keaton Mitchell. I know it's highly unlikely, but hopefully he can be back and be ready and be 100% at the beginning of the season because I would just love that thunder and lightning with Derrick Henry and Keaton Mitchell. But I know the Ravens are going to have backup plans there too. But they got their starting running back, got their starting fullback, Pat Ricard. At wide receiver, they still could add some more there, but you got Zay Flowers, you got Rashad Bateman, you got Nelson Aguilar. And yes or no, I expect them to add more there. I think we all expect them to add more there. But 
you got some starters, some guys who can be quality starters. You got your starting tight ends, Mark Andrews. You got Isaiah Likely. Now, where the first question marks come on the offensive line. Uh, because you have your starting left tackle, Ronnie Stanley. You have your starting center, Tyler Linderbaum. But your starting left guard, your starting right guard, your starting right tackle, question mark. We don't know what's going on there. We'll find that out soon. So that's where the, the biggest holes are right now. But that's offense. So your offensive line, uh, they have to be filled out. Then you move to the defensive side of the ball. Your interior defensive lineman, you got Justin Matabike, fresh off his new deal. You got Michael Pierce, fresh off his extension. And you got Broderick Washington a year into his new deal. So all these interior defensive linemen, they got new money. Um, but then on the edge, the edge is where there is a concern because as of this recording, Jadavian Clowney has been talking a lot to the Jets. They want him. Panthers want them. Want him. The Ravens want him. All these teams want him. So Jadavian Clowney is sitting back like, oh, yeah, my money is going to be increasing a lot this offseason. So good for Jadavian Clowney, but he's a free agent right now, so he's not a Baltimore Raven. So there is there a hole right there at edge? Well, you got a Dafe away. So there's that. Um, we're still waiting for him to turn that corner, but you got somebody who has been a starter. Uh, then you got David Ajabo. Big question mark there. So at edge, there is definitely a need at edge. You can put Malik Harrison there too, but there's a need at edge. Um, then you have uh, inside linebacker. You got Roquan Smith. Uh, and whether it's going to be Malik Harrison next to him, Trenton Simpson is the expectation for a lot of people who that he's going to end up being lined up next to Roquan Smith, so we'll see. Uh, outside linebackers, you got... There's Malik Harrison there. There's a possibility of Trent Simpson there. There's um Chris Board who can play inside outside. He could do different things. Another special teamer too, by the way. Um, so you got options there. Cornerback, you got Marlon Humphrey. You got Brandon Stevens. You got Arthur Millette, who you just signed to a two year deal. Uh, you also got Ardarius Washington, and hopefully he can stay healthy. At safety, you got Marcus Williams and you got Kyle Hamilton. So and then at kicker, Justin Tucker, punter, Jordan Stout, your returner. Now, your returner, I don't think it's an official thing yet, but if you just want to go with somebody who's on the roster right now, you can go with Tylen Wallace. At punt return, at kick return, you can go with Justice Hill. So, um, my point, again, is that for the most part, Baltimore Ravens, they have a lot of their roster filled out already. They have a lot of their starters, but now it's just, for the most part, it's about depth guys it's about depth pieces it's not all about that because some of those guys will get significant playing time um but you got most of your roster intact so that's why i just when people they freak out about signings like these they say oh man what are they doing why are they wasting this money what are they you you need special teams players too so these are still special moves and a lot of times I, i've done it myself I've been like, okay, Ravens are signing that player. I don't know what they're going to do for the team. But then we end up watching the games on Sundays, Mondays, Thursdays, sometimes even Saturdays too. But we're watching a game, and then you see a jersey that you're not too familiar with. Make a play on special team. You're like, oh, that was a nice play. Who, who is that? Is that who? And you're looking for the name. Hey, turn, turn around real quick. Let me see the back of the jersey. And you see the last name. You say, oh, that was that player. I remember when they signed him, and I was like, uh, I ain't know about it. Uh, but, oh, if you're making plays like that, hey, welcome aboard. So that's why with, with signings like these, it's okay. It's okay. They part of the team, too. It is a 53-man roster, and there's still 16 spots on the practice squad. Or is it 10? I think it's 16. Whatever it is, y'all know more than me. So these signings like these, it, it's it's okay, it's it's it's, it's all right. So um, I hope that he does well. Uh, I hope that he can really find his footing uh, with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, this does not, in my opinion, doesn't impact their draft at all. Uh, could they still draft the corner early? Um, they could, but I don't know. I I, I think I'm in like the minority. Because I, I feel like the Ravens, they don't need to draft the corner too early. Uh, because, again, you got Marlon Humphrey, you got Brandon Stevens, and you got Arthur Millette. Uh, so, like, and I know the secondary gets tested. I I, I get that. Um, but, I mean, it obviously just depends on how the board shakes out, who the best player available is at the moment. If a certain corner does come available, but it just, 
all that stuff just depends so anyway team keep it clean i appreciate y'all i love y'all again make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss not a single update subscribe turn notifications on leave a like on the video make them likes go crazy just like y'all know i'm crazy and y'all crazy we we meant for each other team keep it clean we out